Gamers, Matt Lemke here with your Gamer Goggles. We are at Origins Game Fair, and I'm with Lauren Coleman. He is the guru Ooh. of Catalyst Game Labs. It's his bread and butter. That is true. And we're going to talk about all things except Shadowrun. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing new to talk about Shadowrun anyway. Yeah, well, we talked to Jason yesterday. So, oh. so we're, we're, you know, Jason kind of he, he, he gave us the scoop. Okay. And some other scoops. And some other scoops. And some other scoops. He lies a lot. Be careful. Well, that's part of his job as an editor. Yeah. So, we're going to... Where do you want to start? Let's go there. Well, since we have a big, giant thing here in the middle of the table, let's just start right there with Vikings. So, this is Ragnar. And uh, he's uh, part of the Vikings uh, television show from uh, on the History Channel that we licensed a little while back. This is our second product with the Vikings logo, and uh, it's a large resource uh, uh, collection allocation game. Uh, a lot of exploration, as well as a lot of uh, a lot of conquest and pillaging and looting and taking things back home to uh, fulfill your destiny, so you can get to Valhalla. It is one of our largest games we've ever done, and it uh, was available starting just this uh, the last few months here, and uh, we're really excited about it. Get it. <laughs> Crush, kill, conquer. Pretty that's, much. That's more Conan. But, uh, okay, well, we'll move into one of, one of my favorite games. All right. Which is the Duke. Okay. Uh, there's so much that's been done, and I know I'm missing so much, so I, I might ramble on because a lot of stuff probably kind of overlaps. The last thing I bought was the Sir Conan Arthur Doyle kit. Okay. Um, since... Gen Con last year, what has come out for the Duke. If you guys don't know what the Duke is, you really should. Check it out on Board Game Geek or check it out on my blog. I think you meant the Conan set, the uh, Robert Howard Conan. <laughs> yeah, I said <laughs> Sir Conan Arthur Doyle. But Sherlock Holmes would Sherlock, be very oh, cool. He, Sherlock Holmes would love the Duke, I think. I think he'd be, he'd be like a master player. Yeah, he yeah. would. Uh, yeah, and yeah, I said, wow, wow. Uh, I have to do a Sherlock and Moriarty set now for the Duke just because you said that. That would be awesome. It, I will make that happen. I can do that by I can do that by next by next origins. There we go. The the the, the, uh, the uh, Sherlock Moriarty uh, Duke expansion set. Randall's gonna kill me. Um, well, Sherlock can like look in the other player's bag. Ooh. Moriarty, I don't know how you would put that on the tie. Moriarty just throw can just can kill pieces out of the bag, just throw them out of the game. Oh my gosh, yeah, that's awesome. Make this yeah. work. Make, you know, you, well, see, you know, you look to magic for deck thinning because you know, the Duke exactly. is, it's kind of like, yeah. yeah. He can kill a piece. Yeah. So the Duke is a great We tile. just made a game expansion. Yes! <laughs> so the Duke's a tile laying game which can be customized with different flavors of different stories and mythos and what, and, and what have you. It's a very Europe, middle, medieval European uh, tile laying co abstract combat game. And can that be any more confusing? It's a very simple game with a lot of replayability. I've got over a couple hundred games on that, and I, I would play it again right now if we had it, especially with a Sherlock and Moriarty theme. Yeah, it... it but... It, you take, like, ideas of chess and checkers and your grid, and then you add hidden random elements to it, and it becomes chess on crack. It becomes the Duke. Um, and we have a new version of it, which is the Vikings version called Jarl, which uh, is basically, so well, the English have like these nice wooden pieces. Jarl, the Viking set, has this nice fake stone pieces. And if you buy both sets, you can take the English set from here and the Viking set from the other one, and you can play them against each other. So all the pieces we ever do will always be playable all the time. There will never be sets you have to basically, you can't play against each other or with each other. Right. And the other cool thing, too, is every <coughs> cool expansion has its own theme. Like, you did one on Rosewood, right? Uh, uh, we've done a couple now on, like, you're talking about the color? The, the nice yeah, color. the different uh, colors. Yeah. And the Conan Doyle and the Siege Engine expansion kits were all done in a, in a nice uh, rose-colored wood because they are those are the drafting. So no matter what set you're playing, you can draft those in as opposed to start with them in your bag. So if they're, if they're red color, they're draftable. If they're uh, the regular color, then you actually have to sort them out ahead of time and put them in your bag so you can draw them out randomly. Yeah. So that's the Duke and that's the Duke and Jarl. And, it's doing very well. Every year it seems to do a little bit better, which is a great uh, curve to be on. Yeah, I think I think it's going to be a slow-blooming hit. It's been doing very well for us, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a slow-blooming hit. And then, well, you see, you already talked about the R, which is where I was going to go next. I so, beat you to it. Yeah, well, they kind of go together. Yeah. 
Um, so I guess we could talk about Battletech. It, I'm kind of removed from Battletech. I probably haven't played in nearly 10 years. I try and stay up to date. The last thing that I was really, really super interested in was... Uh, I might be mixing up names here, but Alpha Strike. That was the, one. The rule set for Alpha, Alpha Strike. Strike. Alpha Strike is the... It's like Battletech on speed, so you can play with twice the units in about half the time. Yeah. Uh, it still feels like Battletech where you're pounding units down in submission, taking their armor down to get the crunchy bits inside. But it also, is, it was nice is because you have more units on the board, you can start working with things like morale and, uh, and uh, special unit uh, powers and abilities. So Alpha Strike lets you play Battletech just a lot faster. Uh, at a higher level than we were able to get to before. Yeah, it's, it's lance on lance, right? Well, Battletech's lance on lance. Alpha Strike's more co company on company or even Yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah, really so uh, it lets you play it with a lot more units a lot faster. And it's not like the old, well, it wasn't, that wasn't Alpha Strike. We're going back to the facet days. Uh, it's not like Battle that. Force? Yeah, Battle, Battle Force, no, where Battle you got Force those chits. Cool you know. yeah. This is actually still made for you to have your max on the table. Yeah, and then we've got a couple new books coming out to support uh, Battletech and Alpha Strike in general. Which is we had Interstellar Ops come out, which is like the the next to last book of the big media rule books, um, and then Campaign Ops will be out for Gen Con, and then we also have what's new the new uh, series called the Combat Manuals, and the first one was Combat Manual Mercenaries, and they kind of take the best of what the field manuals used to offer, and with more crunchy Battletech goodness, and then puts it all in one book for every faction. Those are coming out. Uh, starting this year. So we've got the combat manual out now. Uh, I believe Curita is next, and then Davian, and then everyone else is just following. Okay, so the the combat manuals, do they have more fluff than the field manuals had, or more? They have a little, more structure uh, like they have a little more structure to them. Uh, they, so in, the, in the field manuals, we, we, we detailed out a lot of units in those books. Um, in this case, I think we, we cherry-picked units a little bit better and then added more, a, a lot more like rules and variations and and, uh, and some tables for you to use. So not only is it just fun to read, you can actually use it more in the game as well. Okay, I get that's good. Yeah. So still have some really great, some really unit descriptions and, and, and fluff in there, but it's also very playable. Um, and campaign ops, what is the, the premise behind campaign ops? Campaign ops basically gives you a so you have, right now we have the rules for everything from from. Infantry, shooting infantry, to mechs, to large wars, to interstellar wars, to any level of battle tech you would want to play. Campaign Ops then lets you take any rules you want and it helps you set them in the different eras. So you'll be able to set them back in the, uh, in the, in the Star League, the Succession Wars, the Clan Invasion. It helps you customize your campaign to a certain period of time. Which is very important in such a vast universe. And plus, without that one, you don't get the really cool spine mosaic. You, you, you'll be missing the whole big picture on the back. So when you put all the books together, they make a big picture on your bookshelf. Oh, I never realized that. Yeah. Huh. So if you're missing one, your picture's not complete. I'll just buy the original art. All right. I can't afford that. Uh, <laughs> it's all digital. So, okay. Um, that's pretty much... Well, where, where, uh, where are you at with like your board game line stuff? Anything new coming up? Well, I mean, you've already got so you got Shadow from Jason. Right. We, we we hit Battletech pretty well. Uh, I talked about I talked about Vikings, and uh, right now we've got a couple more games in production and, and coming out soon. Uh, Wrath of Dragons just came out last year. Love that game. It's a resource destruction game where you play a really a ferocious dragon terrorizing and eating all the pesky people of Europe. Um, it's a, a very fun. Uh, turnabout on the classic uh, resource games. And then coming out soon, we're working on a few things that I'm, I'm just uh, not allowed to talk about yet. Of course. Um, but, uh, well, there's the one, the one I will, uh, the one I can talk about, we, we have announced it, is the, we've got another deck builder coming out for the Valiant Superhero Universe. Yes. And it has, an, in a, really, it's a, it's a much lighter, friendlier deck builder. Crossfire is hard on purpose. Valiant is actually, it's a competitive, uh, uh, just superhero brawl, and it has a really interesting uh, mechanic where the cards can actually change the drafting board. So all the cards are laid out in a grid that you can draft only from certain areas of the grid, and most of the game is actually moving, manipulating the grid to benefit you and, and uh, not your opponents. And it has a really, and they have really awesome miniatures for as the superheroes run through walls and bash on each other. So it's a card, it's a deck building superhero smash up brawl. 
Very interesting. It'll be fun. That'll be out this summer. Yeah, that will debut at Gen Con, right? Uh, I, either Gen Con or slightly before, but yeah, somewhere July, July or August. Yep. Um, the, your information on Valiant made me lose my train of <laughs> thought. So. That's what I can talk about right now. I'm sure Jason let the, let the cat out of the bag on a few other things, including the tarot and other... Oh, yeah, we stuff. talked about yeah. the tarot deck. Beautiful. Blew my mind. It's beautiful. Echo Chernik was just insane. So it blew my mind, because it's just like... He's like, yeah, what are you doing a tarot deck? And then he, you know, before he even started talking about some of the different possibilities, I was like, man, GMs are going to have so much it's fun. A, well, it's a visual tour of Sha the Shadowrun world as well as every card is filled with hooks. So any given card could spawn three, four, or five different adventures. Yeah. Who, who, who's this person in the card? What's that in the background? What does this graffiti mean on the wall? Nothing in that, nothing on those, in those cards is accidental or useless information. It all means something. See, he didn't tell me that, so that's a really good piece of information. Because I am going to go Thieve <laughs> pictures because they've got pictures of all, well not all seventy eight. Oh no, there's like there's like uh, eight cards I think on the wall here. We've yeah. got we have a couple that we've leaked online and uh, the t shirts the, the t shirts absolutely. Um, so those are, those are doing really well and, and it's just it's just it's still it's a fraction of the art well, the she made for this. Phenomenal. Yes, that was, um, that was an amazing artist. Okay, now to back up because I remember my question about value. Okay, you said competitive when, when you're saying competitive. Are you meaning like competitive play possibility? Yes. Well, no. Competitive meaning that you know, just among each other. Shadowrun is collaborative. It's a cooperative game. You all win or you all lose. Uh, Valiant is completely a, a superhero brawl. Only one of us is going to come out on top. Okay. That, so, that's what I wanted. Because yeah. when I, being a Magic player, yes. ex-Magic judge, when I, I hear competitive it. card game, I just think of seventy people in a room. <laughs> we haven't gone that far. We haven't gone to that level of craziness yet. But who knows what we'll do in the future. In the meantime, we've got you know we're working we're working on some more games that would basically incorporate Shadowrun. We're working on games that will incorporate you know, board games and card games that will incorporate BattleTech. Just because you don't like a miniatures game is not a good enough reason not to like the BattleTech universe. There is so much good right. stuff in there. We want to give people alternate ways to explore giant mechs with very big weapons blowing stuff up. Yeah. Well, I actually I was uh, over by your gaming booth. Mm -hmm. And I saw Solaris 7, and I saw the big pieces and stuff you had there. Is that a box set they can buy? I've never seen it before, if it is. They're playing Which, with, Oh, Solaris 7, the, the bigger mechs and stuff? Yeah. And um, the, well, like the hex grids? That's, that's the, well, that's the uh, you're talking about the, in, the, in the D hall, the, the Battletech Battle guys bring in this, they bring in these, these over-the-top miniatures and, and, yes. and custom-made mechs, and they just go crazy over there. If you haven't been to an Origins event and seen a Battletech event, you're just missing out because those guys are nuts. Yeah, they call it Solar Seven. And yeah, I'm like, called, and they're using. And I think what they're doing there is the old Solar Seven rules that actually FASA published. They're using. They're yeah. doing actually a throwback game using using uh, uh, things like you know the, these these really cool pilot events like you know these 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 guys are showing off and doing these little flare attacks and really special you know hyper focused rules and uh, so it's a, it's a throwback game to the FASA days with some really awesome. Miniatures and, and terrain. Well, they, they're, they're phenomenal, and yeah. I'm like, I hope that's a, a new box game that I missed because it looks we, like you, if you could buy the box, you could just sit down and play the game, and that that's. We are working on some fun stuff in the background on other ways to play Battletech, also as a miniatures game, but no, that's that, that's just a custom kit. But we are working on some stuff that might be uh, might be out and announced and out in the next year that uh, you might enjoy. Okay, cool. That's cool. Um, so, what about Gen Con? What kind of plans you have for Gen Con? I know you're out, like, you know, meeting guru at Gen Con. <laughs> uh, Gen Con will be, I mean, it's, it's our biggest show of the year. We, I mean, we love Origins, we love Gen Con, we love PAX, we love all the shows. But Gen Con, it's just from the size. We really go big. Um, we try to run lots of events, big campaign events, big storyline events. Um, I can, you know, but we, part of the fun is we don't tell you what's going to happen. So, you know... Empires rise and fall. Major characters die or come back, or and there, you know, and there may be something to do with the tarot, which may cause something extremely cataclysmic um, in the world of Shadowrun. I'm just not going to tell you. I'm just going to basically, you know, hint all these things that could be a different tarot card every day at Gen Con could be fun. <laughs> That's not even discussed. But still, it could be fun. Foil, I, I foil, foil promos at Gen Con. I have Con. no idea what you're talking about. 
see? And, and he didn't. He, you know, I'm just psychic. Uh huh. Uh huh. I'm probably wrong, too, because I'm not that good. Uh, okay. So, well, okay. We're, we're about done because he's, he's got to run. He's got another meeting. Um, I just want to say that I really think it's cool how you guys run around when you're at the shows and you just like talk with every game company that's out there. You don't care about their size. You don't care about whether they're doing the same kind of genre. Nope. And you just help them out because there are a lot of other game companies that don't. We got a lot of help. We came into the industry eight nine years ago, oh my god, nine years ago, uh, we almost to the month, we've been here nine years, we got a lot of help when we came in from some people who, uh, who have since done big things, um, we have really enjoyed the friendships we've made on all levels of this industry, and we will continue to basically just, you know, we like work with other companies, because I believe when we, we raise the bar, we all win, we're going to, everyone can make better games, including, you know, everyone can make better games, and they're not my competition. The only competition I have in the room is myself. Everyone else is just, they're just my companions along the way. I, and I, I like that philosophy. Uh, are you guys doing the um, what, the date date game thing this year? The speed dating? Speed or dating. Yeah, we, we, we go and meet new designers. I've actually bought a game from the designers last year in the speed dating round. Um, and I hope to find one this year. You never know what we're going to find in there. What game did you buy last year? Wrath of Dragons. Oh, and it's already, it's already okay. out. Yeah. Bought it, wow. out, published it, love it. Yeah, great game. And now, do you do speed dating at Gen Con as well? Yep, we always, we always send people to those. And we and we were always open to designers walking up to the booth. Uh, the speed dating events allow us to send a few people there and, and meet like you know 20, 30 at a time, and look for games and look for people that we haven't met before. It's just a way again. It's a way of giving back, and occasionally you find a really good game that fits your line. Okay. So, yeah. There you go, guys. There you go. Everything that Lauren wanted to share, and maybe a little bit more. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Thanks, Lauren. Thanks.